Howdy there, folks. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and it's that time again. Time to learn five awesome new tricks for your Mac using the macOS Terminal. All of the tips today will be enabled via the macOS Terminal. If you've never used Terminal before, you can find it via a very quick and easy spotlight search using the magnifying glass in the top right corner. Or, of course, you can find it inside of your Applications folder from within the Utilities subfolder. There you go. Tip number one. Have you ever wanted to send a document securely or perhaps store it securely for your own use with a password? Well, in the macOS terminal, you can, and I'm going to show you how. First, you need to type CD Desktop with capital Desktop. That's just to tell the finder to look on our desktop for all of the subsequent commands that we're going to type. What you want to do is type zip because that's the output file that we need to use. We're going to type minus E to tell it that we want an encrypted zip file. And then we need to name the output file. So whatever you put in, this is what's going to come out. So we'll just call it output.zip. But you can name it whatever you want so long as it ends in zip. Once you've done that, I am going to drag the file that I want to encrypt. So this song, I'm just going to drag it and drop it inside the window and press Enter. Once I've done that, I have to enter a password that I want to encrypt or password protect the file with. And I'm going to do test. Notice that it doesn't actually, uh, there's no dots to indicate that you've typed the password, but don't worry, it understands what's going on. You just type enter again, and there you go. It has given us an output.zip file, which is an encryption of this file. You can see it only compressed it by 6%, so we didn't save much space, but that wasn't the purpose. It was to archive this with a password, and it has been done. So if I type any wrong password, it will not open. And these are encrypted with a pretty high encryption, so it's pretty hard to brute force or break into this. So it's a really secure way to you know, lock your documents. But do keep in mind that if you forget the password, like you're done. You're never getting it back. So don't forget the password. But if you type the right password and press OK, then it will unarchive right here on your desktop. You can open it. There's going to be a small file tree you have to work for. But there you go, your unencrypted file. You can also do this with folders. And do keep in mind, if you're doing this with a folder, it has to be pre-compressed. So if I wanted to encrypt this folder, I have to already put it in a zip. And then I type the exact same command, zip minus E. I can name it whatever I want, folder.zip. Drag the file in, press Enter, and you guys know the rest. Tip number two. A lot of printers have some pretty crazy default settings, and oftentimes when you pull up the print dialog, you need to make some changes, but you have to click the Show Details button in order to get access to the rest of these settings. And honestly, it's, I mean, it's one click. It's not that big of a deal. But it is kind of annoying if you print a lot of stuff, and let's say your printer, like mine, for whatever reason, always prints two-sided, even though I tell it not to every friggin' time. Anyway, <laughs> what you can do is go into Terminal and paste the following command. Defaults write minus G, print expand state for print minus bool true. This is the Boolean value, so we're saying turn this on. And when I press Enter, it goes into effect. Well, actually, that's not quite true. This is one of the few terminal commands where I do have to reboot the computer. But once you reboot the computer, you can pull up a print dialog, and it will always, 100% of the time, open this expanded print dialog without you having to click Show Details. If for whatever reason you decided you didn't like this, you could switch it back by changing True to False, pressing Enter, and rebooting your computer. Tip number three. Anyone remember the Mac OS dashboard? <laughs> In fact, I bet many of you have only ever seen this because you've accidentally hit the wrong function key on your Mac's keyboard. No one uses this, including Apple. I mean, look at this weather widget. It's about as iOS 6 as it gets. And thankfully, in macOS High Sierra, Apple did cut its CPU usage down significantly. When it's in idle, it usually takes less than half a percent. But if you're running an earlier version of macOS, or really even in High Sierra, you don't want it to take 1.2% or half a percent. You want it to take 0%. And so you can disable it altogether with the following, uh, the following command. The other advantage, obviously, is if you accidentally hit the wrong function key on your keyboard, it won't launch. So you type that, press Enter, you can just paste it, by the way. Paste that, enter, there you go. It's all done. And when you try and open Dashboard once again, well, it's not going to open. Sorry, Dashboard. Rest in peace. Tip number four. I see a lot of people hiding their dock lately. My presumption is that because Spotlight is getting so good, and also maybe because people like me use apps like Alfred. But the fact of the matter is that a hidden dock, especially on a MacBook where you don't have a ton of room, is really nice. The problem, however, is that the dock does take quite a long time to pop out for two reasons. Number one, there is a delay in between when you move your cursor over to the side of the screen and from when it pops out, 
And that initially was to have a kind of a rejection in case you got your cursor too nearby. But trackpads and mice are so good nowadays that I think that's kind of redundant. And then the other thing is, is that there's a transition from when the dock begins to pop out to where the dock actually pops out. So there are two different terminal commands I'm going to show you. You can only use, I mean, you can use both if you want. Many people will probably only want this first one. But basically what it does is it turns the delay from when the dock begins to pop out to zero. So as soon as you move your cursor over, it immediately pops out. But even for me, because I access the dock quite a lot, that still isn't quite fast enough because that transition is slower than I'd like. So what I can do is run another command. Ooh, let me, there we go. Run this other command where I can change the transition speed to basically zero. I kill the transition speed altogether. So the second, the, the millisecond that I move my cursor over there, boom, the dock automatically pops out. It may not be super pretty, but for people who use and access the dock a lot, it is very, very handy. Tip number five. I think every Mac user on the planet knows about Grab, you know, the application where you can take a screenshot. But what a lot of people may not know is that there are some handy hotkeys. If you press Shift Command 3, that just takes a screenshot of the entire desktop. There you go. Not anything very special. Now, if you press Shift Command 4, that allows you to make a selection and take a screenshot of just a portion of your screen. Now, what you can do is once you've drug your box out, you can hold down the space bar. And as long as you're holding down the space bar, you can move the whole window in case you're, I don't know, a little bit off of what you want to capture. That's a pretty handy trick. But the best feature of all, in my opinion, is if you press Shift Command 4 again, but then you press the space bar, it turns into this little camera button where you can actually take a picture, a screenshot of a specific window. So all I've taken a screenshot of is the window. And unlike, you know, a regular screenshot where you're trying to line it up and frame it up and, you know, the windows aren't, don't have square corners. And so it doesn't look perfect. But this, I mean, this is beautiful. It is perfectly rounded and everything looks great. The problem is, is that Apple adds a very annoying, in my opinion, drop shadow. Now, in some circumstances, you may want this. On web pages, it looks pretty good. But on screenshots that you're posting to Twitter and most places that you're putting stuff, it gets very annoying very fast. But you can have this disabled pretty easily. All you have to do is enter the following command, press Enter, and bada beam, bada boom. If we take a screenshot again by pressing Shift Command 4, then we press the space bar, and then we select this window, you'll see that it takes a screenshot, a perfect one again, mind you, but of the window itself, not with a drop shadow. Well, folks, that's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Check out these other awesome videos about macOS tips and tricks, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.